welcome to this episode. I um, am so excited to uh, speak to you today because I have a friend that uh, I've been cultivating a relationship with since COVID, and uh, and I'm really honored to uh, have him here with us. His name is Eric Gilmore. Welcome, Eric. It's my honor to be here, man. Yeah, we met uh, in, 2000, in 2020 during COVID. I like to share that because it was kind of a fun time where not a lot of people were calling and saying, hey, come, come, come. <laughs> so when we called, you're like, yeah, I got nothing else to do. <laughs> and so we got to uh, hang out, have an amazing time. And since then, um, I think we have you every year. And, and I get to uh, go to Florida. I have a couple friends there. And one is you. And you brought me to a, uh, we were just talking about coffee a second ago. We, you brought me to a, uh, what is that, Columbia? CFS, yeah. Yeah, I love that. Soul. It had like a blueberry notes, and I was like, wow. I actually ordered some. Like, I have a coffee company, and I still ordered from another guy. I ordered some. It wasn't that great because it was the old. They sent me like their old stuff because, uh, you know what I mean? You got to get rid of it. So I was like, dang it. I was like, oh, I, I, I actually thought this. I was like, when you were coming, I was like, I should have told him you got me a bag of that. <laughs> That's so good. Anyways, uh, so I'm honored uh, to, to have you guys watching from wherever you're watching. I know some of you are watching from around the world. Um, for those of you who have never um, met Eric or heard Eric, uh, you can go to um, his YouTube channel, subscribe there. Do you, just as Eric Gilmore uh, is the channel that you can go to, just search that. You're going to find amazing content uh, for years now. Uh, he's been uh, releasing just some seriously amazing content. Um, but your ministry is Sonship International, which I love that ter- Sonship international which uh you had told me one time was because you had a professor who had something that just said sonship on it and that i was like at the time apparently 20 years ago that wasn't a term that was used a ton Uh -uh. and when you saw that you're like we like that absolutely come on so um but big big part of uh your passion and your desire what i pick up on Mm -hmm. from you is this desire for people to um, probably from your background, maybe of seeing like Brownsville revival, and then what happens is it can get out of balance in ministry sometimes, where we make it more about miracles, signs, wonders, deliverance, resurrection, all these things, which for sure are, are part of the kingdom. But if it gets out of and we become Matthew 7, where it wasn't because of an overflow of beholding him and becoming, it was. Look what I can do in this. Like, I need to do this for him and instead of this, this co-union with him that changes the world. So is that... Is that uh, yeah, bringing the church into a deeper awareness, consciousness, and experience of his personal presence. Let everything else come from there. Yeah. That's first. Love God. It, we're going to love people, but love God. And love your... Like, that, that, but one comes before the other. If it's out of order, it starts to, like Eden again, where we start to fall away from the original design of a thing. And that's why I wanted to talk to you today. Um, we're just going to have a conversation. We want to invite you kind of into, in a sense, if we get to have talks, we just hang out. We had lunch yesterday. Just hang out. We just talk. You know, so I, I kind of, I could do it like I've done some where I interview and I kind of whatever. What I wanted to have maybe is just like as if they got to come into the coffee shop with us, yeah. we're just chatting about the things we love, which is Jesus, mm-hmm. his domain, his, his, his will, his purpose, his intent, his delight. Um, and we, we get to have those. And I thought, well, that'd be kind of fun just to have a conversation, spur one another on in our love for who he is and what he does and kind of just what he allows us to be a part of. Um, theological meaning bible just you know Mm -hmm. and then they get to just be a part of that i think it would be beneficial to kind of you know i would have loved to 20 years ago when i got saved sit in on and listen to two people who had spent their lives pouring into him and gazing into him and then just hear what they would talk about if they were together so um i always love our our conversations so we're just welcoming you into a conversation this is the framework of it okay And uh, I know it's going to be a very rich conversation. I want to frame it, though, so that you understand kind of what we're about to and um, uh, to to talk about. Okay, so 
I was telling Eric before we started that I want to talk about the kingdom of God. Let's have a conversation about God's kingdom. But when I say that, pretty much if you've been in the body of Christ for a while, you're going to go, oh, I know what they're going to talk about. But I wonder if you do, because you have to understand we all have a lens. So what I was speaking to Eric about, which I, I want to challenge you, is there's so many lenses to it. There's not, it's like a kaleidoscope. Mm-hmm. You were, say, say that quote you were saying Charles Spurgeon said about. Yeah, <clears throat> to shift the kaleidoscope to find new combinations of his peerless graces. We're given these different imageries throughout scripture to be able to emphasize certain aspects. So the kingdom of God is like a kaleidoscope of the desire, this is what I would say, the desire and the intent of how God wants something to be. Because a kingdom has to do with a king and his domain. So people talk about that. Praise God, that is true. But at every, let's put the lens on his, how he would do marriage. Mm-hmm. There's a kingdom. So sometimes people talk about revival. And I go, I've watched revival destroy marriages and family. Seven days a week, kids are like, I don't even, my mom and dad got divorced I, you know, after, after the revival ended. Why? Well, they never talked. They were in church all the time. I'm like, how could that be God's intent? I don't understand. How, how many have seen that? Mm-hmm. So, so I've seen it. I go, that doesn't make any sense to me. I don't think, so we're saying, well, I want revival. I go, I'm not sure that I have as pure of a thought on what that might be as you do because of what I've seen it do. So I might mean something different when I say that. And, and I go, because I think the kingdom, when you, when you I, I see it like a, a, a magnifying, when I look closer at it, I go, he, he, he talks about marriage. What's his desire? What's his, if he had his perfect way in marriage, what would it look like? I want to do that. Okay, what would his perfect desire for a father and his children be? Husband and wife and how they parent their children. Kingdom, his way. How would he do it? I want to do that. How would he treat uh, his neighbor? That's kingdom. I want to do that. And so he says, the kingdom of God can be related to. And he's trying to help them understand well, if God had his perfect way, what it would be like. And they're just like, because they've been in Adam's domain for so long, a corrupted home with what ways that aren't, that the last Adam has to come and say, well, let me show you how it was really meant to be. I want to invite you into that. This is the caring for the poor. This is the, the lifting up. The, this, this is the healing of hearts. This is the deliverance of the oppressed. This is the joy for those who are mourning. This is, and he's like, it's all of those. So when we talk about kingdom, you might have in your mind miracle signs and wonders or this or that. Praise God. That's part of it. But if that's the highest thing of what you think it is, you have to know that that's not, that it's going to be out of order. And you can become Matthew 7 where he says, who are you? What do you, what do you second? I cast out devils. I prophesied. I, I, well, didn't we raise it? We did all this stuff. Didn't we do these things? Yeah, but I, I'm trying to find your name here. <laughs> it's like... I don't think I know you. Who are you? you? You should look familiar. You should look like me, and I don't see you. I don't see, I don't see me and you. So, so, <laughs> so I want to talk about a couple of them, and we, maybe we just um, geek out on God for a second, sure. um, on how you, we just feel we, 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 we've been pruned, challenged, delighted in some of these imageries. First and foremost, I just want to go to being a, a son because I got saved and I was one of the things I, I quickly realized is how loved I was. I was like, this is crazy. Like, he didn't bring up my sin. He didn't say, you wicked. He didn't, he didn't do any of that. I felt embraced and I felt free. And the freedom came from this, like, I'm loved. Like I, I, someone could have been like, uh, and, and condemned, and I would, I, I don't think I could have been rejected. I was so chosen and, and adopted and like handpicked, it felt like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, there's a kids in an orphanage, just like, I want that one. That's how I felt that if someone was like, you're not loved, I'm like, I, I just know otherwise. I'm so loved that it laid this foundation of 
not striving, not trying to please, not like when I was playing football as a kid when my dad didn't come, which was often, you would look into the stands and look for him. Mm -hmm. Is he there? I didn't feel that one bit. I felt Emmanuel. I felt like I don't have to look for him. I already know. And it wasn't whether or not he was disappointed. I never felt that. Even when he was disappointed, I didn't feel shame. Mm -hmm. He was like, let me help you, son. Let me show you a better way. So let's talk on that. Talk, talk on what was your experience, what's been your experience as just this like, you came into the kingdom, you got, a, you got a papa, you got Abba, you got this father. Let's talk about that lens of the kingdom for a second. <laughs> Paul has this phrase, he says, the spirit bears witness with your spirit that you're a child of God. The Holy Spirit brings great conviction concerning these things. And when I say conviction, I don't mean like, uh, what I mean is convincing the Spirit convinces you that you are born of God. And Jesus says, you must be born from above. There's this new birth that takes place by the reception of the Spirit. As 1 John 3, 1 says, how great of a love with which the Father has loved us that we, you and me, worms at the best, would be called children of God. Come on. You know, this right here causes a, a joy. Uh, it, it, it creates a peace, an acceptance. It's a deliverance. It's a form of deliverance, right? You're delivered from not feeling those things, not knowing those things, which brings just sadness to the heart, right? How many people do I come to the altar and they're sad, they feel rejected, they feel all this stuff, and I'm like, that I, I can, there could be a spirit behind it. You know, I could tell that to leave. But if you would just know, You'd be able to resist. He says, resist the devil. So sometimes we, they want power. Like, Get that thing out of my life. It's like, you need to know who you are. If you would, because he said, you'll know the truth. And he'll set you free. It's like, you're, when, you're, when you know you're loved, when you when convince that, when you just yield to the, what the Spirit's trying to convince you of, <laughs> come on, somebody. When you could just yield to that, it's like, oh, I'm loved. Like, ah, I'm not trying to, to get you to approve of me, I'm already approved. Yeah. That striving ceases. Yeah. Oof. yeah. Striving kills you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's you know, striving is wear the you curse. Out. <laughs> Enjoyment is the covenant. You know? And when we come into knowing that we're accepted fully by God, we're granted Christ standing. Charles Spurgeon said it like this, I stand before God as Christ because Christ stood before God as me. Yeah. That full acceptance so that the work is done. The work is done. Now the I get enjoy. The blood has ripped the veil. <laughs> yeah. And I've received the spirit. I'm a child of God. That right there does a work in the, in the heart. I mean, I mean, think of the first time you read Romans 8. Yeah. <laughs> and you read this and you're like, what in the world am I a part of now? Yeah. This reality. Coming of off of spirit. seven. Yeah. <laughs> which is the whole thing beforehand, which is just this like depravity of what happened. Adam's like, yeah, you want food now. It's going to be sweat, toil. <laughs> It's going to be hard. Not just resisting the things that aren't of God. Just everything. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to resist you. Yeah. The, the, the river's not going to be, the wind's not going to be toward, you know, in your sails. It's going to be against them. <laughs> and now he's like, I've reversed it. Yes. Just please. sit, you know, because you're like oaring before. Yeah. Trying to go up, up the stream. And then he's like, you know what? You were actually going the wrong way the whole time. So just get rid of the paddles and let the stream take you away. It's like, yeah. let it take you. Like, and that's what we're in now. Yes. Where you don't have, if you're paddling, it's like, what? Like, stop. What are you yeah. doing? It's like this. And, then, and Adam beforehand, everything was planted for his benefit. Yeah. Think about that. You just, oh, you want an apple? Oh, there it is. Oh, you want a water? You don't have to. The earth does it. Like, you're not getting the hose out and, like, kinking it and, like, trying to get around the, the, the furniture. You know, it's like, you're pulling. It's like, no, it's just watering. It's like, I got an irrigation system. I had to flush because it's getting cold or whatever. I don't know how I have to do it. The earth is just watering everything. It's like, everything had a design. Yes. And we're coming back into it to where it's like, now everything is bent towards your enjoyment. Yes. Oh. Yeah, the Garden of Eden is called the Garden of Delight or Pleasure. Mm -hmm. And when he makes man, he sticks him right in the center of the garden called Pleasure. And then the scripture says that God ca caused the earth to increase. Yeah. So you see this beautiful picture of when you delight in, in God, specifically rooted in that you've been completely accepted and loved, then God begins to cause things to grow and increase in, in our lives, which I think is the main reason why people live 
striving and condemned all the time is because they can't, by faith, receive what the gospel has granted to us completely, full access to God, complete acceptance with God because of someone else, Jesus Christ, on, on our behalf. And, the, and what do you think the issue is? Is it that we're not abiding? We, we, it's in that relationship oh. that we really realize that. Like the strive, because we, it's like we, 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 we come to know him, yes. and, then, and then somewhere in between, we've lost abide, and we go back to strive. Like, I think striving is always just a result of how, how close yeah. we and how, how near we've been. That's why it's like we always say, Mary before Martha. It's like there is stuff to do, but there's a delight in the stuff we get to do, right? He's like, I got good work planned beforehand for you. Yeah. It's, 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 it's super going to be fun. But it's out of Jesus is like doing miracles, and he's like, all right, see ya. And he goes and spends time with his dad, and he's like, all right, let's keep going. And it's just it's like, seems like this delight. Like he's like, yeah, we do stuff. And that's really amazing stuff. But it's always seems like it's flowing from the vine. It's this, it's, 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 you know. So it's a natural response. I think mm -hmm. striving is a natural response of, I always say to people when I see they start getting like, Ugh. I go, where are you reading your Bible? And they just do this. <laughs> because those issues only come when we stop yeah. drinking from the water, stop eating yeah. from the bread of life. We, when we stop doing that, we get hangry. We get spiritually hangry. We get, we, 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 it, it's not, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, it yeah. goes back to striving. Back to striving. I just finished um, Abide in Christ again by Andrew Murray. Oh. And in there, he gives a definition for abiding, which I thought was just worth a whole semester in Bible college. He says, abiding is nothing other than accepting the position God has given to you and staying there. Come on. Man, how simple, how wonderful. And that causes, Jesus tells us, if you abide in me, and I in you, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Those are the things that issue out of faithfulness to God, the works of faithfulness. Yeah. You see, even like, I remember reading Watchman Nee, he said, if Christ is not life, then you better get working. Uh -huh. But if Christ is life, then you need not struggle. Come on. Because the principle of life will begin to work on the inside and cause, as you were saying, a spontaneous outflow. Mm. You know, it's like you were saved without works, and now you're saved too. The working of faith on the inside, faith begins to work yeah. on the inside. What does Ephesians tell us that he has created good works beforehand for us to walk yeah. in them. I, 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 I um, see in Galatians 5 this beautiful thing in the first couple of verses where he says, um, for freedom's sake, he sets you free. <laughs> and then he says, um, you know, if you add anything, if you add circumcision, if you add anything to it, Christ will be of no avail to you. Yeah. And the imagery for me is like, if there was, you know, 600 and, you know, they say 13, whatever, laws that had to be fulfilled perfectly to get in to, let's say, salvation, into the kingdom, into the perfect will of God. It takes, so then let's say you do your whole life, 613 laws, but you have to do every one of them your whole life perfectly. Mm -hmm to get $1, the, uh, the entrance point is $613. You need 613, but you have to do every law your whole life perfectly to get a dollar at the end. Okay, let's look at this law, you did perfect, here's $1. If you mess up, 612, one, just, you, it's not access, you don't get in. So then the imagery the Lord gave me was like, you get to, you go to do circumcision, what you're trying to do is, can I add a $1 to it? <laughs> he said, no, either you take the pass that says Jesus, all access paid, <laughs> or you go and get the 613 yourself. You have to either pay for the whole thing yourself yeah. or the all access pass. Don't try to add a dollar because yeah. what you're saying is the pass wasn't enough. That's really good. So then once you're in, he says, now what do we do? <laughs> Love one another. So you're in. You're no longer doing works to get in. <laughs> you already got in. The work's already been done to get in but now that we're in he's like there's this cool thing in here we love each other <laughs> we, we we love him and we love each other there's no it's not about getting in anymore you're in yeah all the striving was to get in jesus did the work so the striving can cease yeah you're already in you know because th that's the whole thing is trying to get in yeah you're in 
So it's like the table's already set. Enjoy. It's like, oh, I got to go. I got to go get. I got to go hunt. I got to go. I got to go. Hey, yeah. there's food at the table. What are you going to get more food? Like, this is way better than that food. And, and it's already set. Just enjoy. Yeah. We're trying to go hunting when he's like, there's already food on the table. Yeah. Just sit down and eat. Just enjoy. Enjoy dad. Enjoy your brother. Enjoy each other. Love one another. Yeah. It's like, so, so now the motivation's no longer to, to that strive. It's just, it's delight. Yeah. So I, we get to do cool stuff. We, I, I just like serving God's people, all of that. It's out of this like, I get to. Mm. But it's not like I have to. All, the, all the, the Adam, the kind of like toil part, it's, it's removed. But as long as I abide. Because once I'm not abiding, when they come to me with, oh, my marriage, what, what, I, what should I do? And I'm not, I haven't been with the, 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 the lady wisdom, who is Jesus. And had I haven't been with her, there's nothing to flow. Yes. So then I'm like, oh, I don't know what, I, uh, uh, uh. and I don't know how, I, there's, now there's this, uh, because I don't know how to help you. Why? Well, if I was abiding, mm. lady wisdom would be like, uh, tell them this. And I'm like, wow, that was a good, wow, that was really good counsel. I was like, wow, I sound smart, but it's just really him flowing through me. But all of that, once that's missing, yeah. then it's like everything's hard. Everything begins hard to be, you know, there's no water. Yeah. The spirit, there's no, you know, it's like no nourishment, the bread. It's like there's no, the things that the spirit in Christ are to us, the bread of life and the wa- live, the, 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 the well of, of, of uh, the spring, spring of water, those things are missing at all. Mm-hmm. Then I have to take care of them. I'm like, I don't want to. Die. Oh, it's a good shepherd. I'm a, it's a counselor. What for counsel? I'm gonna let them help you right now through me. So yeah. Oh, that's such a beautiful there, imagery. There's an imagery that uh, Ravenhill speaks of. He says inflow, overflow, outflow. Mm. So you you need an inflow in order that you might have an overflow that produces an outflow. Yeah. And so ministry and Christ likeness really isn't completely seen until there's an outflow. Come on. That's dependent on an overflow. Yeah. That comes from an inflow. So if men are not receiving of Christ, yeah. there's no way for an overflow. G- David says, my cup is running over. It's like, I'm receiving so much from you, it's spilling over the sides and getting to other people. That's God's design, a spontaneous outflow, overflow yeah. of the reception of divine life. That's the new covenant. That's the spirit on the inside of man, where, like you said, it's no longer a work it's working together with a cooperation. It's a yielding into another's strength, another's wisdom, another's power, another's purposes. Yeah. The adoption of him and, and him, you know, coming through us. But there's even a yielding in that because uh, I was seeing when you're talking, those who might be listening, who um, they, they, they've accepted that God has called them as a minister, as parents as something you know as a over you know whether it's a parent or a shepherd or whatever it is a teacher a principal something where they have to be a source to someone else that they make it more about i'm supposed to be a source so they're going to the word they're going to prayer but it's more so they can get something to feed the people mm-hmm. instead of yeah just enjoying <laughs> just enjoying i i've talked to pastor friends and they they really toil over their message they toil over all these things and i'm like like you need to relax like you need to you know it's like the notes everything okay and they come in and they're like okay am i ready and i'm like relax really just relax because if you if i were to take those notes and just send you up there you would realize because of your time with him there's something there Uh but there's this angst connected to sometimes connected to fee, uh, provide and i go relax just even if you were to just get rid of that watch what comes up like right now we didn't prepare <laughs> how much has come you know it's like so just go and be with him yeah he might tell you hey the people need to learn you know i want you to teach them about humility great go and just chew on the humble one you know go in and delight on the humble one yeah. like honey just go in and then all of a sudden he'll change you and you go, oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. And then when it goes to time to talk about the one you've been with, yeah, like spontaneous. You asked me about my why. I could talk to you about the one I've been with, <laughs> not because I looked at a photo, because yeah. I enjoyed, you know, my, uh, you know, time with 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 her. Um, it's more like that instead yeah. of, oh, I had to prepare something about my wife. I need to tell everyone about my wife. I need to, okay, okay, she's like, you know, I had to do that. 
Does that make you just like, just relax. Absolutely. Go and be with him to enjoy him. <laughs> it might be on an area that you're discovering about him, but this is, enjoy it. Stop striving. Stop, yeah. stop, stop doing that. The, the, I read the biography of uh, Robert Murray McShane, and a lot of his journal entries are in there. It's actually called The Memoirs. And he writes in there this statement. It jumped off the page and hit me. He said, no doubt there is pride in the anxiety to preach. Yeah. No doubt there is yeah. pride in the anxiety to preach. There, there's a pastor that I preach at his church every now and then in Orlando. It's called Church in the Sun. Alex Plattenberg. He's been faithful to God for many years. But every time I preach there, he invites me up. I give him a hug, and he whispers in my ear, have fun. <laughs> uh, in other words, enjoy yourself, yeah. you know? Relax. Enjoy yourself. Just have fun. Yeah. So now let's switch. Yeah, sure. So sonship is, mm. is you know, your ministry is sonship, yeah. right? So it's this, it's this wonderful thing. We got Abba, embrace. He's like, it's the kingdom's like a son who went away, and then, mm-hmm. but this is how dad is. You know, yeah. it's this wonderful imagery of just running to embrace us, not to, to oh, my gosh, you got pig stuff on you. Oh, yuck, you know, get away from me. No, it's just this wonderful embrace. Yes. And and so, um, but then there's this imagery in Scripture of, of a husband mm. and a bride. Mm-hmm. And this is part of the kaleidoscopic imagery of what he desires. What he, yes. what, you know, the king is... A king gets to have what he desires. Yes. He, he, has a, he has a desire. He longs for something. And so it's like when we talk kingdom, we got to talk about all the areas of what he longs. He longs for the poor not to be yeah. poor, the right. sick not to be sick. He longs for us to love and treat, but he longs for a bride. Let's mm. talk on that. Yeah, uh, it's funny. The last time the church <laughs> is mentioned, 2217 of Revelation, She's called not the warriors, not the no. theologians, oh. not the Olympians. Uh, she's called the bride, mm. you know, and the it spirit. says the spirit and, and the, the bride. bride. Some theologians will say that that word and should be translated in. Yeah. The spirit in the bride is saying, come Maranatha, mm. which would say that the Maranatha in the blood, come quickly, Lord, is the evidence of the spirit on the inside of, of a man. So the bride we know to be someone who one longs for his return. But also the bride is someone who has no other lovers. She's committed to so one. Fun. She's married. You know, it's like I, I tell this story. Uh, let's say two, a guy and a girl, they fall in love. And uh, they're laying in the grass one afternoon having a picnic. And he turns to her and he says, I love you. And uh, I, don't want, I don't want to live without you. And uh, will you marry me? And she says, you know, if, if you say if I say yes to you and I marry you, that means you're saying goodbye to all the other girls. And he says, yes, I, I know, only you forever. That's marriage. Yeah. I'm not gonna try to find fulfillment, satisfaction, peace, joy in anybody or anything else. It's now exclusively me giving myself to you to be those things to me. We have that beautiful imagery in Genesis chapter 20, 24 where Abraham yeah. sends out his servant. And when she comes to that point where she has to make a decision, Am I going to go with this man? They say, will you go with this man? Yeah. She has to choose. Am I going to leave my father and my mother, the provisions I've always known, the friends I've always known, the place I've always known, the comforts I've always known? Am I going to leave all that to find now all that in him? Mm. And she says, yes, I will go. And they get married. So that's the, the essence of a bride. She finds everything in him, receives him to be her all, letting go of all others. Uh, you've been to weddings. You've oh, done weddings. Yeah. And it's they say in it, forsaking all others, keeping only to thee. It's yeah. exclusive love and affection, finding all in Christ. Come on. I love the imagery from the first. If we just go and gaze upon the scriptures with Adam and Eve, this first <laughs> wedding. <laughs> and go, okay, perfect. there was one. Yeah. And the fullness of the perfection of man, because it says he made him in his likeness so there's one to be honest there's one only one huh. in his likeness adam and then he takes adam and he reaches into him and he takes out a part of adam and he makes another so to me there's no longer adam is no longer the full imagery <laughs> of god you have to now look at both of them because mm-hmm. there's a part of adam that's now missing it's an eve so to see the fullness of God now, those two have to become one again. Mm. 
So I think the fullness of the beauty of the glory of God is only going to be found in that. Because part of it was removed. Hmm. It's in another. And he says, okay, now, now become one again. So I think with, with that, that's what's happening with, with, with Jesus uh, and, and the church. He's like, okay, now become one again. Yeah. God was with man. Behold, the angels will even say, oh, God tabernacles. Yeah. It's like this, this, this imagery of the fullness of God in one, Jesus. And then he reaches into his side like mm. he did Adam. And he takes out a bride, yeah. the church. And he says, okay, now come one, become one again. And Jesus goes, oh, make us one. And so between now and then, he's like making us, it's like a, it's we're enjoying trying to wrestle and the ecclesia with, with, with the bride rest to become one again. He's not going to have an unequally yoked bride. The spirit is given to us like Esther was given a helper to make her ready for the king. Mm. And this is like oiling and, you know, this, this, this perfuming, this, this wonderful process we're in so that one day the wedding bells will ring and mm. he says, come. Come, and there's this union again, and all of heaven and earth will rejoice for the wedding feast of the Lamb yeah. is ready. She's clothed herself yeah. in white garments of righteousness, and she's ready. Let's go. I'm like, yeah. uh, you know, I just those, those wonderful two elements that create the bride you see on the cross when Jesus is being crucified for our sins. His side is opened up, yeah. and blood and, and water, water come out. Come on. The two elements that make the bride. Yeah. She's washed in the blood, and she is sanctified by the spirit word, yeah. spirit dash word. Yeah. And these are the two elements that make her what she's to be. And you even think of like Corinthians when, because 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 uh, uh, um, Esther, she has to be washed. Mm. She has to. That's the whole imagery. She's bathing. She's cleaning because she's not ready for a king. Mm. Yeah. So the spirit, the water, and the blood. As John talks about these 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 imageries of the blood, the, you know, yeah. the, are washing us, <laughs> the spirit washing us from our sin, the blood, the word making us to be like you know it's like this get her ready, yeah yeah get Ruth, her Ruth ready as well Ruth yeah remember Ruth wash yourself anoint yourself yeah. clothe yourself before she meets the kinsman redeemer and mm. uncovers his feet which was a a a way of asking yeah. for marriage remember if he puts his slipper wow. on then he says I'll marry you. But all, all this to say, even like in Corinthians, talking about sexual immorality, he says he joins himself with a harlot. Yeah. By ex it's an experience that makes them one. Yeah. But then he likens that to the Lord. And he says, he who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. It's experiential, yeah. intimate experience, not sexual, yeah. but a actual, intimate, real heart-to-heart -heart exchange of love but he's using those things as a reflection reflection yeah you know what i mean like we we're not you, you it's trying to teach us you know something so even this is to go a little far i don't know if i should do it but you know on your wedding day there is a there is blood there should be right that that covenant yeah it's covenant so there's this imagery of blood on a wedding day with the consummation of by set by you know intimacy and there's this imagery of course like you said that's not he's not trying to crop but there is an imagery yeah there's this imagery that it's like wow you like literally designed <laughs> everything to reflect absolutely a desire of your heart that i just i marvel at god and how intricate to every little thing that he's placed them there and he's just like wow why not just make it to, you know, like that that will reflect what I desire as well, that there would be, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Paul says in Ephesians here, he says that this is a mystery, but I speak of Christ and the church. And what he says just before this is, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word that he might present to himself, as you just said, the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but she would be holy and blameless. So husbands ought to love their wives, even it, no one ever hated their own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it just as Christ does, you know, the church. But because we are members of his body, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. That's the Adam and Eve mm -hmm. analogy that you just yeah. pulled from. And two shall become one flesh, two no longer two. One. 
one, the loss of self in another, praise yeah. God. <laughs> and then it says, this mystery is great, but I'm speaking with reference to Christ and the church. Praise God. And I think there's this, this thing that um, I've talked to, with you before we started about with like Jesus' name, mm -hmm. where he, he, Yahweh, the father, and then he's like, okay, I'm going to have a son. I want to name him Yahweh is salvation. So it's so tied to the Father that is it, is it Yahweh? Is Jesus Yahweh? Or is he Yahweh is salvation? And the answer is yes. <laughs> to where it's, it, that's what happens even with a husband and wife. Is it Tom and Katie or is it, it's almost like there's no, there's no Tom and. It's like you said, it's like the and is missing Tom, Katie. It's like there's this like Jesus and it's like they become one. <laughs> Which one is it? He's like, yes. You know, like, it, we are Christ in the earth, it, the, the scripture talks about. Like, as he was, we are in the earth. It's like, wait, what? That, that messes with us, right? He's like, yep. Which one is it? He's like, yep. If, you, if you're one, that, that, that God wants to invite us into that. That kind of freaks me out, but it's like this wonderful thing, meaning like this, the, the reverence for that. Mm. You know what I mean? That's what I mean by free. You kind of like the, like there's a holiness connected and yeah. like an awe that's like, whoa, you're inviting me? Yeah, yeah. So there's this like wonder and excitement and yet reverence for what he's, because I think about this. I, I see people lord over their wives. Well, the Christ is, you know, they're, you know, head and, you know, I'm the husband, I'm, the, I'm, I'm your covering, you know, and there's this kind of like religious domineering. I said, where, where, did, where did Eve come from? The side. Yeah. Where does Jesus, who's now enthroned in the highest heavens at the right hand, invite us to sit with? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At his yeah, side. Yeah, Why? Because that's where we belong, <laughs> at his side. I'm like, wow. So even literally in the earth, where, does, where do I want my wife at? In ministry or any of that stuff, when we're governing the family, that he's, you know, our kids, all that, it's at my side. Like that's, it's not, I'm not, yes, I am technically a covering, but it's like, where do I want? At my side. Yeah. This is this wonderful, when we catch that, it stops being this, hey, you need to listen to me. You know, it's like this domineering, it's like, that's not his heart. He's not even doing that to the church. <laughs> He's just wooing her. <laughs> it's like, come to my side. Yeah. Let's enjoy doing this together. Yeah. It's beautiful. It is, it is the, the fact that he would even include us with himself. The fact that he even says, Abraham, I, I'm the God of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob, he connects himself with people. It is absolutely astounding wow. that he would do such a thing. But even in the ages to come, we shall all bow down before his greatness yeah. and worship him and say, you and you alone are worthy. Yeah. Wow, it's beautiful. So, okay, so there's the son imagery, father, son, yeah. which I want to catch because, one, I want to first be a son yeah. because he's asked me to be a father. <laughs> and so I, I take the same kind of awe wonder and reverence in that because i'm like i can't make a human you know eve's like look i made man i'm like i don't i can't do that because the scripture said he knit us in our mother's womb i'm like i really to be honest the breath of life that's needed in a child i'm not able to do that hmm. so so you're entrusting me with children I couldn't do that, you know? Like, I love the, the imagery. It's like a man with fire. It's like, oh, I made fire. You know, it's like, I'm like, I don't really actually think I could do anything. So, like, I'm like, okay, you're entrusting to me, and you're asking, you're inviting me to be father hmm. to someone else. Yeah. Okay, so the original design, the original um, the delight of you is that I would mirror you in this. I think that's the heavenly host. They were supposed to, he gave them, Deuteronomy talks about, to, to rule over the nations as him. He gives man to rule over the, 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 the earth, the birds, the cattle, the sea, the sea as him. Hmm. Rule with me as me. <laughs> to reflect me, yeah. reflect my rulership. Yeah. I'm entrusting you with the keys of the earth. Rule with me as me. <laughs> I think that's what he did with the angelic host. Rule with me as me, the sons of God. And they didn't, right? Humanity didn't, they, the, some of the angels didn't. They didn't rule with as. Hmm. They said, wow, it would be nice to be worshipped ourselves. You know, they, 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 they twist it. I'm going, okay, if my desire, if I'm being by, invited back in to rule with as, <laughs> I better reflect how he fathers. <laughs> and then he's like, yeah, I want you to be a husband too. I'm like, 
okay, uh, I want to reflect Jesus, like he says, he uses that image. And I go, okay. Then there's this other side of the kingdom, which is like the physician. Mm. There's a brokenness in this world. And that's what people talk about. Miracle signs, one of healing. It's like the yeah. shepherds in Ezekiel that they didn't heal the sheep. Yeah. There's a shepherd imagery. Mm -hmm. So, so okay, so we're hitting the kaleidoscope. We're just kind of turning it and looking at different ones. Um, and we let's use this as the last one. Sure. So, so there's this like imagery where the shepherd to the sheep, mm -hmm. but it's also in a sense a, a physician to the broken yeah. where he's, he's saying that's who he is. Hmm. And then he's like, now reflect me in the earth. Yeah. Speak on that. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Do you, do you feel like a good way to look at it would be light and darkness? Oh, come on. Because even here it says he rescued you from the domain of darkness and brought you into the kingdom. You're going to make me fall over. Of his beloved <laughs> son. But wouldn't you say it's it's like when you, you do a lot of deliverance here, yeah. you see lots of miracles here yeah. at this church, and it's just light expelling yeah. what, darkness, What was right? never meant to be there. What was never meant to be there. So you being submitted to the king and his kingdom are an extension of his light expelling yeah, a shepherd. If there's a wolf coming, mm. it's like, well, they're 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 in danger now. The goal is to remove that so that we can enjoy Eden. The mm. delight's gone of the still waters because there's this sheep will be jittery even though there's still water there because something's there that's not supposed to be. There's danger, mm. right? There's 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 oppression. There's there's whatever it is. I always use this imagery: is that um, whether uh, from the Tower of Babel. I think Babel instantly becomes, for the rest of time, even in Revelation, Bab the great Babylon has fallen, Babylon, you know, it is this imagery of man, from even Adam and Eve's decision, to rule according to, they get to determine right and wrong in their own eyes. Hmm. It's like, you know, God, you're saying it's not good to eat, but I think I know better than you. So then man goes on a journey to try to make decisions of what's right and wrong according to their selves. So... So they do that. They pick instead of don't touch and eat instead of don't eat because maybe I know better. And then Cain thinks it's good to smash his brother in the head. If he, I don't know how he killed him, but, you know, let's say he smashed him in the head with a rock. That, it seemed good in his own eyes to do that. He's like, you know what would be good? Kill my brother. <laughs> it's not good, but it's what he thought was good. <laughs> Think about it, right? So then let's build a tower to the skies to make a name for ourselves. It, it's, just a, it's just a twisted, right? So then, and Pharaoh becomes an imagery of Babel. It seems good in his eyes to kill babies. Yeah. America seems good in their eyes to right. kill babies. Right, that's terrible. So it feels good in, in their eyes to oppress a people to make them do what you want them to do, to put heavy things on them and to require them to do things against their will. Slavery, all that stuff is, we think we know best. So we do it according. So Babel, for me, is an imagery of Pharaoh. Pharaoh is an imagery of Babel, what, whether it's Nimrod or whatever. All these people are just an imagery of the, the beast, of the whatever. It's this, it's this choose what's right and wrong in your own eyes instead of catching Yahweh, the I am, the, the substance of the, 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 the Torah, the, the ways of God, how it was originally. So when I see someone broken, I go, God's original design was never brokenness. Yeah. Oppression. God never meant oppression for you. Mental illness. God never. That's not how he meant for your design to be. Mm -hmm. So then he fills me with himself. <laughs> yeah. Gives me the power as a governor now again over the earth huh. to execute his desire in the earth. He gives me the power to do so. And so he, he, he leads us. So demons aren't in Revelation 21 and 22 because they're not a part of God's domain. They bring oppression and sickness. So there's no sickness there. Why? Because there's not sickness in God's domain. So when Jesus says the kingdom of God is at hand, yes. repent, turn away from, from, from Adam and turn into the second Adam, right? The last Adam, turn into my domain, Yahweh's ways, and go and make the earth right again. Bring it according to God's ways. So the reason we pray for the sick to be healed is, is not just so we can go, look what I can do, right? It's not a parlor trick. It's like, you know, yeah. it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a trick. It's bringing God's will, his ways, 
into the person's life. And so that's why we get a new heart. It's because our heart was never meant to be stony. Mm. It was meant to be fleshly. So he says, well, let me have my will. <sighs> Conforms back into how it was. Um, you, you weren't, you're not supposed to be broken. Let, let me pray for you. Be healed. Um, you're not supposed to be demonized with fear and anxiety and depression and, and, and all that stuff. That thing has to go. Leave now. Because the kingdom's on the east. The kingdom's within you. So those things need to first go. Then they begin to, like that. you said, the overflow mm -hmm. into how we treat each other. How we, But there's this inward working of the kingdom, which is freedom from things that shouldn't be there. Yeah. Those things were never for according to this. So I never... I never make a big deal out of them because it's just the cleaning up. Uh, in our school of ministry, second year, we teach them how to heal the sick, prophecy. You know, uh, let's just talk about the the healing part, the, like the not the prophecy side, but let's talk about the healing and the resurrection and of the dead and the casting out demons. Those things. Um, in third year, I say, I'm glad that you know how to do those things now. Let's see if you can heal a marriage. <laughs> Right, let's because you want to bring the domain of how God. So we get excited because a knee gets healed, or back gets healed, or cancer disappears, or or, or a demon flees. Praise God. Okay, now there's more. That's not the end of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it should, should overflow into how they treat each other, yeah. and their children, how they do business, huh. how they do life, yeah. how they cultivate the earth, how they, you know, how we do greater family with people who aren't technically have the same last name as us. <laughs> How do we become one? So, so that's the deeper levels in a sense of, of coming into that order mm -hmm. of how God originally designed. So yeah, for, uh, for the physician part, it's just reflecting, bring it into, but guess what? We're not gonna do those things in eternity. Yeah, right. right. So there's always that what's all, what are we gonna do in eternity? <laughs> so there's always that, that's actually first. We're not gonna heal anyone in eternity. Not gonna cast out any demons. They're all in the lake of fire. So it's yeah. like, <laughs> you know. So so so. But they are needed now. Yes. In the day of salvation, and yeah. that's the whole thing about the kingdom. Is there's the, I talk about the day of the Lord. The fullness of the kingdom will come. But right now, the Bible, the whole imagery is it's the day of salvation right now. Yeah. It's the mercy time. There will be a judge that comes. Justice will be served. But right now, he's giving mercy. So the day of salvation is huge emphasis. Well, that's. That's that's justice for the poor. That's justice for the you know he's he's liberating, he's healing. In Isaiah sixty one, he's doing all these things, and I talk about this Isaiah sixty one, anointed, spirit of God, mm -hmm. anointed to preach good news to the poor. Why? Well, the poor need good news, but they're they're, they're oppressed, they're broken, they're all these things. Um, he's liberating them from that. That was never his intent. That's why it's good news. He only bring you to what you actually healing their hearts, open up prison doors, doing all these yes. things. Then then he says. To, to remove beauty for ashes, joy for mourning, all this stuff. Then he talks about being the planted of the Lord. You can't become an oak of righteousness, brown, sick, all this stuff. So we have to do those first. And then we start to, our roots start to go, we start to, and then we start to feed the nations. Yeah, yeah. The imagery in Revelation where the trees feed the nations, it's like, that's us. Who's the imagery of the, all the trees in the scriptures? Huh. He calls us an oak planted of the Lord, right? Isaiah, or, or Psalm 2. That by the He's talking, he's saying, us, we become those planted in the river. And then he, that's a, it's a crazy imagery. Like, I'm like, the tree of life is Jesus. And then everything else, he's like, yeah, you're going to feed the nations. You're going to, I'm going to use, because you're planted in my house. Mm -hmm. They're going to come and eat. And I'm like, Flourish. whoa, this yeah. beautiful image. But you can't ever become that sick, bound, all that stuff is kind of like, this tree is almost dead. That's like a vine, a vine. Grapes are beautiful imagery because they're like sheep. They have to have a shepherd, they have to have a pruner. He uses two imageries for us. Sheep, sheep die without shepherds. They're super vulnerable, no defense mechanism. They get wet, they just drown because their wool is so heavy. So, so they, it's crazy. Sheep just in the wild, it's super dangerous for them because they have no defense and they're just very vulnerable animals. So he's like, yeah, that's what you are. And then, um, a, a, a vine actually will not produce grapes that can produce wine, the good wine, huh. without being pruned. Wow. What vines do is they just go out. They keep going out. They keep going out. So they never have enough nourishment to produce a, a, a grape. They're just a little, have you ever seen them in the U.S.? These little, mm. like, they, they, you try to eat them, you're like, ugh. You have to prune it. It's pruning that will produce it, right? So this is imagery. It's like you're like, you're like a vine thing. 
but you'll never produce unless there's a, a vine, unless, so that's the healing, all that stuff will bring you in and then whew, you'll become an oak of righteousness. Yeah. So I see myself in, in an, excess, an extension of his body, extension of his hand yeah. to his people to heal, to get it to, so that you can actually, so people get excited about that. That's just the beginning work. Most times when someone invites me to their church, I do end up ministering deliverance and healing. Why? Because the church isn't doing it. It's what's needed. I want to talk about good marriages, but if you're filled with demons, depression, you don't even want to get up in it. How talk about those things? It's just self, it's just you're still girding yourself up because yeah. you're still so oppressed. Let's remove those things. Now let me teach you how to treat each other. Yeah. So it's like, it's just... You know, I love the imagery of the good... Oh, I'm, I'm talking too much. Okay, so, so the, I've just seen so much. Is, is He says, uh, how, how do I be a good neighbor? And he says, okay, and let me give you an imagery of the Samaritan, right? So then the Samaritan's the imagery. But I think Jesus is the good Samaritan. We're the one half dead in the, in the ditch, right? Mm -hmm. That's the first imagery. I'm going to use it again in a second. Then he picks him up and he takes him to the inn. I think the inn is the church. Mm -hmm. And he says, I'll come back for him. Oh, come on. He said, let me give you what you need. Here's some fine. Let me give you the spirit. Let, he bandaged his wounds, and then he brings him to the end. He said, okay, take care of him. I'm going to come back. And so that's the image. But then we become, to mirror him, the one who goes to the ditch, hmm. picks up, and brings, right? That we, but religion passed by. Yeah. Religion didn't stop. Yeah. Religion didn't help. But one stopped. Hmm. And now he's like, okay, be like that. That's what he did for us. And he's like, okay, now freely give what I gave you. Yeah. So, so to me, miracle signs and wonders is just a, the beginning part of the bandaging up. But the goal was never to be broken and wounded. And then it's like, now that you're healed, okay, go and do whatever you want. It's like, no, Adam and Eve weren't broken and wounded. They still did wrong. So it's like, I have to heal you so that you can get to this level. But now i got to teach you the ways of God. Mm -hmm. There's a deeper level of deliverance, and it's your mind thinking like Christ. Mm -hmm. Anyways. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's beautiful the expelling of darkness by the kingdom of light yeah. in human lives. Uh, that's, that's a non-negotiable part of the kingdom of God, you know. And if we don't have a motive of a son and a bride, it'll become, look what I can do. Yeah, look, ma, no hands. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we don't feel loved, so if, if you'll love me because of what I do, which is an orphan thing. Yeah. Instead of I do because I'm loved, it's I, I, I do so I get loved. It's yeah. like, no, it's of an overflow of, I see God never desired for you. You know, it's like uh, Jesus looking over Jerusalem. Oh, I yeah. long to gather you. Yeah. You know, it's like you, when you possess God's heart for his people as a shepherd, it's not, I'm this, you know, awesome thing. It's like, oh God, I want, I want to present. I want to, be, you're allowing me to be a part of making your bride. I'm the helper, the paraclete, the, this is the imagery of the wife to the husband, mm. of the spirit to us, but of us to the body. Like where where you he's using it to help get the, help them. You know, the apostle prophet evangelist pastor to give him what? To equip, to to make ready, to help them mature, to help them. So he's using us yeah. as an imagery. I'm like, oh, it's just, the reverence and awe is just what keeps me yeah. low. And you know, sometimes when I'm fasting or those things, it's not asking God for more. It's just humbling and just saying, I never want to raise up. I bump my head when I do so. I'm going to stay low. Yeah. I need you, God. Yeah. I can't yeah. do any of this. You're asking me to re represent you to this world. Hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm just going to get low and say, okay, oh, help. Yeah. I need you. Help. I need you. Yeah, it's good stuff, man. Amen. Well, we want to pray a blessing over those who, do um, you have any last words for those? There's some that are, that are just in the body. They're just trying to be used, you know, this, that, and another thing. And it's like, okay, make sure. Mm -hmm. There's always that make sure, like, that's not the Martha. Yeah. I got so much work to do. You know, it's like, what, what's your last words to those who are watching around the world? Yeah, I would say remember that everything is auxiliary to Jesus. It's all secondary to him, all coming forth from him. It is knowing him. It is loving him. It is eyes on him. It is worship of him. It is the value of his words. It is submission to him that causes all these things to actually come about. I think that uh, that is the most important thing yeah. because these things will be inevitable, spontaneous outflows yeah. of having Christ at the center and source uh, of life. Yeah. Amen. Well, I want to 
uh, give my last words to you. I, I have a deep desire for this revelation of stillness. Eden is an imagery of a garden. If you ever go to a garden, there's uh, botanical gardens here in the U.S. I just went to one in, in, in a couple years ago with my wife in Victoria. Uh, what's that one called? Bouchard? And, uh, and, it, and it blooms all year. <laughs> they, they planted it to where it has flowers and buds, 12 all in the winter. There's certain plants that bud in the winter. All the, so it's, it's, it's blooming 12 always. months out of the year, which is an image, right, of Revelation, right? It's yeah. like the, and it's always got for, it's, anyway. <laughs> and I just go, oh, that's beautiful. But y- there's a stillness. There's a quietness. The biggest danger I see in the body of Christ today, one, partly internet, social media, how loud everything is. I grew up in the city. When I moved to Olala, which is in Washington, for those who are watching all over, it's horses and pigs and goats and it's farmland. My parents had, tw- they went from being a little lot in Tacoma, where you could walk across in 10 seconds, to uh, 20 acres with the streams, the vineyards, all this stuff. It's crazy. I was like, this is like Huckleberry Finn. This is like crazy. This is like, you know, I did not know what to do. But there was a quietness. Rarely cars would drive by. You know what I mean? It was just so quiet. At night, it was so dark and it was so bright. The stars were so bright because there's no light, afflicting, you know, inhibiting the other light. I think that's the imagery for me sometimes with Christ. There's no other light clouding out, seeing the one light that's supposed to be showing at night. You know what I mean? It's like the, that, that the other lights kind of dim out this light. And um, and uh, I, was, I just was able to, I would go back in the woods, and there was a stream on both ends of the, the property. But up in the hill, up on the hill, there was a stream that would flow down it. And I would just sit by it, and I would listen. And about 20 minutes into sitting, I would start to hear all the sounds the birds, the water, the leaves. And I was like, whoa. My soul would go, Ooh, I'm the middle child of 11. <laughs> so the house wasn't like that. <laughs> so I never lived in the house growing up. Like, you know, that was more than 1,200 square feet. Like it was, you know, so 11, 13 people in one house. So, so, so um, I would get there. And so I just, ch- how to find Eden, there's a part of this imagery for me that I tell my wife, you know, in the morning, if she can get her devotion somewhere else, because I just, there's a secret I want to challenge you with, because I know a lot of pastors, they're reading all the time, they're watching this, and they're tr- counseling, and they're work, they're just, just busy, 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 all the Martha. There is work to do. Those of you who are in body cry, you're a mom, you have kids, it's hard because they don't sleep or this. You got to make breakfast. You got to help your husband get out. You got all this stuff, 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 stuff. To have a time every day, just sit by the stream of God at the table of the Lord. And it's just as for ministers, for every single believer, and just get quiet. You, you, some of us, we think, well, I got to read three chapters a day. I got to this, I got to that. I gotta, blah, 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 blah. I, I read probably more than most people I know, okay? I, I do read a lot. I'm not saying that I don't edify my, and just get washed in the water. But I'm saying if it's a religious thing because he's not actually there, what have I done? So just that, this challenge, I just, I'm, I'm like really, really want to challenge you. And some of you are, are actually my disciples around the world, at, in Nixon and Alina in Romania, I said, first thing first, you, they said, we want to swim in, we want to come under, we just really, and I said, okay, you're on sabbatical. They're like, what? It's like, because they're leading churches, sabbatical. And then, and it's like, okay. And right now he's like, my life is so amazing. It's like, I said, because first, everything's going to be out of rest, but you don't know how to rest. Yeah. So I said, okay, sabbatical. I want to make sure you have everything financially, don't worry about it, but rest. Because some of you, you don't know how to rest. So we're talking about rest, and it's like, you're just like, you man, if I uh, rest, well, good for you. you, you get a rest. It's like, no, you get to, you're powerful, and God offers it to you. You just have to choose to do it. But you're scrolling, 
your nonstop watching of your binge watching of your YouTube, Netflix, all that stuff is not necessarily, and watching a show is not bad. I'm not trying to make you really, I'm just saying after coming and sitting and learning how to rest and just gaze on him and be touched. You touch him and he touches you. It's going to change your whole life. So anyways, that's my last little thing. Everything else comes into order, in my opinion, when you learn how to just do that. But you got to learn how to delete certain things and cut them off because they're not benefiting and they keep just leading to anxiety and all this other stuff. So, well, I'll put out your hands. I want to pray a blessing over you. I'm going to ask Eric to, to actually do that blessing. Eric, will you pray for the people? Father, we thank you that you enlighten the eyes of our hearts to see the hope to which you have called us and it's the exceeding greatness, and the surpassing greatness of the power of God towards us who believe. We thank you that you strengthen our inner man and you quicken us to delight to do your will. I'm asking that grace would flow into every viewer, that grace that works in us both to will and to do for your good pleasure. Lord, let it be that today there is a fresh experience of that wind that lifts us and the current that carries us. Your precious, loving grace carry us, Lord. Wash over those who need to be cleansed. Fix the mindsets of those who are scattered and bring us, Lord, low before you to recognize your greatness, your goodness, your glory, your name, and keep us right there before you, empowered by your spirit to live with the spontaneous outflow of divine life, to accomplish all your purposes for your own glory. In your precious name, amen. 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 Well, bless you guys. I hope you were edified and built up by this time. We'll see you next time.